So the question is, how can I stop or how can I limit losing sales to salespeople that underbid me? How can I stop or how can I limit losing sales to aggressive salespeople that underbid me? The answer is actually fairly simple, but uh, complex at the same time. The first part of that is to know that you do not want to put yourself in situations where the lowest price wins. It's that simple. You don't want to put yourself in the situation where lowest price always wins. What does that mean? What can you do from a practical standpoint to put yourself in situations where it's not just about the lowest price or, or working with uh, cheapskates or people that are ignorant of value as opposed to price? Well, unless you have a ton of capital and are ready to scale up to at least five or 10 full-time employees, you know, a combination of, of like two-thirds system engineers and a couple people to develop the business, and you're looking to do that very rapidly, you really, really need economies of scale to be able to be in a bid-based business. And when I say bid, B-I-D, what we're talking about is bidding on Fortune 1000 accounts, bidding on, on federal and state and provincial and, and city, municipal, school board type of accounts, where there really is a legitimate formal bidding process. When you're talking about small business owners going out for bid, well, that's just pure nonsense. You don't want to be in situations where you're working with prospects where the lowest bid wins, where they're just completely clueless about the difference of, hey, you get what you pay for, or the difference between uh, price and value. Um, you do not want to be playing that game with small businesses because unlike an IT manager for a big city or for a school board or, or a Fortune 1000 kind of situation who actually knows what they're looking for, let's face it, the overwhelming majority of non-technical small business owners and managers outside of the IT industry, let's face it, they really do not know what they're looking for when it comes to hiring a IT vendor. And for them to just boil down to lowest price, don't put yourself in those kinds of situations. There's uh, much, much, much better ways for you to be marketing your business and, and capturing the rates and financial arrangements that make sense for your business, that are truly mutually beneficial, that are truly synergistic and mutually beneficial to your business for the long haul. And small business owners and managers that want a technology provider with stability, that wants someone that can be with you, be with them for over a period of several years, they're not just interested in being hit and run artists. They're not just looking to squeeze you as hard as they can and bleed you dry and then move on to the next victim. That's not how they do things. They're looking for the, their relationship. These are the same folks that probably have been with their accountant for several years or more, have been with their attorney for several years or more. They're used to having these long-term relationships with trusted business advisors, and the kind of clients you want are exactly that. They're not hit-and-run artists. They're not looking to just, it's not just about me, me, me. It truly has to be a win-win for both parties for it to uh, work. And any client that wants to just bleed you dry and hit and run, they're a leech. They're, they're not a client. So don't put yourself in these situations where lowest bid wins. And unless you're really looking to scale up quite large, and unless you're specifically going after enterprise clients and, and government entities where there really is a formal, well-qualified bidding process in, in place, there really is no room for bloodsuckers and leeches and parasites and cheapskates and, and control freaks in your business model. You need to be a lot smarter about how you grow your client list. And I strongly encourage you to make sure that you're able to accomplish this as you need to get proactive about your marketing and lead generation and your targeted demand generation activities. You really always need to be promoting so you don't end up desperate and you don't end up succumbing to the, the pressures and the bidding mentality. You really need to be a lot more selective in, in what you do with your lead qualification and marketing and promotional activities. You know, in other words, you need to be able to make decisions from a position of strength, from a position of confidence about who is worthy of entering into your sales funnel, who's worthy of being nurtured as a lead. And you know, it first starts with having a good, strong, proactive marketing plan of, of, uh, and of how you're creating awareness in your local marketplace, but it also comes down to having decent lead qualification criteria. In other words, finding out about size, what's the predominant platform that's installed, what industry uh, are they in, how are, they've gotten, how are they getting support now, their IT support now, how have they gotten IT support in the past, are they used to paying for professional support? Those are really, really important qualifying questions to ask and then take them through a logical step-by-step -step sales sequence because again, you're not out to chase the hit and run artists and the leeches and the parasites. You want to focus on the best steady high paying clients in your local area. And to do so, you're going to want to be more selective in your lead qualification process. Obviously, to be able to afford to be more selective in your lead qualification process, you actually need to be proactive. If you just kind of are sitting there on Monday morning twiddling your thumbs and waiting for the phone to ring, this, this isn't going to work. You actually need to follow through 
uh, on a good, strong, proactive plan of attack for raising your awareness in your local community with the right kinds of decision makers. You want to always be promoting your expertise and, and your brand and your value proposition and not just products. When you're a box pusher, when you're a commodity broker, when you're just focused on reselling the products, that's not cool because you're pushing the pr you're pushing their brands. You want to be pushing your brands. What's the best way to promote your brand and your credibility and your expertise? By publishing white papers, by whenever you do a speaking engagement or a seminar, make sure that you're recording it so you have an audio CD or, or a DVD that you can offer as a, as a lead generation vehicle on your website and when you do any kind of, uh, of display advertising. And it helps to build up the credibility and the mind share and positions you and your company as the one and only choice for your prospects to consider when they need that expertise. It really is largely about training your prospects to know that when they have the need for IT, that there's only one place to turn, your company. And if you are undermining that or shortcutting, if you're just trying to take a shortcut, a lot of times you're going to get burned. You're going to end up with a bunch of clients that are just uh, cheapskates and deadbeats and, and tire kickers and time vampires and, and just a bunch of jerks. You don't want to do that to yourself. You want to be a lot more proactive, a lot more deliberate, a lot more focused about where you want to grow and where you want to take your business. Do not promote, do not succumb to that whole box pusher, commodity broker mentality. It completely contradicts the value proposition of being an outsourced virtual CAO. And of course, you need to be able to tell your story and explain your value proposition clearly and effectively, but it's a lot more powerful and even a lot easier in your sales cycle if you let others do it for you. So make sure among your existing satisfied clients that you get testimonial letters, that you capture testimonial vehicles, uh, t capture testimonial videos. Um, make sure you have your flip camera or whatever you're going to use to do that with you always so when they're keeping on the phrase and they're patting you on the back to say, oh, this is fantastic. We love the new system. You guys are, fa are terrific. I wish we found you years ago. Our, our, our overhead is lower. We're a lot more productive. We're expanding into new lines of business. All these terrific things because of, of what you've done with your problem solving and, and how you approach all of the IT solutions for our business. So make sure you capture those. That can be a, a, a very effective way of being able to explain your value proposition to prospective clients. And, and focus on selling ROI-based solutions, return on investment-based solutions, as opposed to just pushing the, the products. And again, the ROI-based solutions are, are really easy to sell, not only when you have a worksheet that explains the cold hard data, but when you have other small business owners and the uh, small business owners and managers in the local community that your prospects have maybe even heard of because they're in similar kinds of businesses and are familiar with, and they say, "Yeah, if Bob over at ABC Company says that you're great, well, Bob's word is good enough for me. Where do we sign?" So, you know, that can make an enormous, enormous difference to being able to get higher hourly billing rates with much, much less sales resistance. That can do wonderful things to the profitability and growth rate of your business. So, the question was, how can I limit or how can I stop losing out on uh, salespeople that are underbidding me? Is don't play the bidding game. Go around them. Be a lot smarter about how you grow and you market your business. So, thanks so much for tuning in today and for asking this question. We look forward to hearing your success stories and comments below real soon. Take care now. Do you need to get more customers and clients with high lifetime value onto your company's client list? Do you need a simple systematic way to jumpstart some easy IT services sales? If so, then you'll definitely want to get your hands on our free guide to seven IT sales secrets that jumpstart easy services sales to high lifetime value customers and clients. To get your free copy now, while it's still available, just head on over to ITSalesSecrets.com where you'll be able to download your free copy within just a few moments. Again, to get your hands on 7 IT Sales Secrets that jumpstart easy services sales to high lifetime value customers and clients, just visit ITSalesSecrets.com.